It's me again. Welcome to another episode of the Cobra Daytona Build. Um, we've finished the front brakes for the most part. We're waiting to, for some paint to dry on some adapters, some uh, brackets. Uh, then the front brakes will be pretty much done. I've got to bend one more uh, piece of tube and then it's the flexible line to the calipers, which as you can see, I don't have yet. I mean, I've got them, but I can't put them on because I'm still missing shocks and so I'm not going to waste my time. Uh, so my next step, as you can see, I've got the front brake line run. Um, and now I'm going to work on the rear brake line. So this episode is going to be how I'm going to run this. And I'm still not sure. Somehow I got to get it through here into the tunnel and then all the way back. Um, I'm just not totally sure yet. And I got to clean this sticker off of this thing too. I hate those stickers on the line. So we'll get that done. Uh, so yeah, so follow along. We'll see if we can get this back, uh, the rear brake line run and then the, uh, tubing, the plumbing for the brakes will be done. So appreciate you watching. Please hit subscribe if you'd like to see uh, more videos and uh, looking forward to you. follow along on the uh, rear brake line install. Thanks. So I'm thinking I come out of here, do a little jog up pick this up and then I'm thinking of punching right here it'll be up underneath the dash kind of wrap it around come out right basically right there uh, I don't know I don't know I guess I gotta look at the manual see if they got any better ideas or maybe I can uh, trim this thing down some that way I can get the panel on and off even with the brake line in I think there's, yeah, I think that might be my best bet. Just U-shape this, go right through there, and then on down. I think that, and then I could put a little grommet around it to protect it from uh, chafe. So I think that's my idea. Here, here, and then it's straight forward, right on down the tubing to get to the, to the rear, down the, the chassis tubing. Um, I think that's my best bet, but I'm not totally positive on that yet i'm gonna look at the manual may uh hop online i just don't see anywhere else that's really gonna be i don't know so let me go look at the manual looking at the manual that's exactly what they're doing they're running that right there so i think that's what i'm gonna do and then i'll bend it this way It's gonna come out. I think I'm gonna kind of do this. Hopefully, you can see all this up underneath there. Um, I kind of mock it up with some of this rod here. Make sure you get your uh, your nut huh, above where you're bending or it ends up in a bad, bad time. So then we're gonna bend this. I'm actually going to bend this a little bit more. We're going to... See, so that should look good. And then all what I'll do is I can put a, a clamp right up into here, up into that tube. So that way we've got total support there. If I need to pull this thing off down the road, it's easier to unbolt that and just kind of push it out of the way. And then that master cylinder comes out quite easily. So... As I said, we'll continue bending until I get this up under and then we'll do another jog down this way. So I, I think they just kind of had this loop to do. I didn't look very professional. This should look very nice once I make this last corner and strap it up into here and then down and boom. So we'll continue on here. Um, I won't show you any more of this, but we'll just keep moving along. Without trying to scratch anything. Okay, so we're just gonna tighten that one up and then I'm gonna get this one here in. 
and then we'll start working this line on back. There we go. So that looks pretty good there. So start working it back, uh, attaching it to that rail. Uh, we'll bend this probably by hand. Um, as I said, it's gonna be hidden. So this thing's gonna come up somewhat into here. But I gotta get this part up into that way. So we're gonna work this here done so far on the rear brakes um, I come out of the uh, master cylinder I got a 90 degree under some guys run the straight fitting um, yeah because you can't really line up the 90 where you want it but you can get pretty close close enough so I'm coming out coming over this way put my cover back on um, attaches actually to the chassis here goes up under here underneath this uh, you can see it kind of here and then it's going to go out um, i'm probably going to come up into here i'm thinking and then it's going to go back to probably this tube here oh, i don't know and that's where i'm this is where i'm going to deviate they've got it factory five shows it down into here they come out and down into here but the brakes are going to be all the way back into here so that's why I'm thinking I'm going to come out to this tube and straight over. That's the way I'm kind of seeing it. So that's where we're going to deviate from the factory five recommendations. Um, I think that's what a couple guys on the forum have done too, where they have also come down on this tube and then placed it right into here. So that's kind of the plan. Uh, follow along and we'll see how this whole thing works out. Cause I said, I really don't know where the brakes are going to sit up, but I think they're going to be back into here somewhere. You know, fixing see my hand on the back into here. Uh, I think they're on the back. I'm going to go look at the knuckles real quick since they're inside and get an idea of what I'm dealing with. This, this, is, this is why you try to do as much as you can before uh, you put the aluminum panels on because if you do it right, you don't have to get up underneath here for a lot of jobs. Most of the jobs are... I uh, can't even see my center punch. Where the hell is it there? A little bit of flex. But it's not touching anything. I probably won't touch that one. Oh, actually, I think I got this one on backwards. That's why. Okay. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So we got our brake line hardware. You can see this is the mounting plate. These are the clips. I'm not a fan of these things. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to shorten this one hose a little bit. It's just, uh, it's kicking that over too far. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna have to shorten this hose up. <sighs> I was hoping I wouldn't have to do that. I was hoping it was gonna be a plug and play, but it's bending a little too far, so. We gotta shorten it about uh, two inches or so, uh, maybe more than that. Okay, so this line is gonna go up into here. And then come down into here, just like that. Might bend that inward a little bit to pick it up. So might do a little bit of a jog inward, but then this will screw right up into the plate, which will be right there. That should be pretty good. Uh, so now we got ourselves a mess. So, oh, sorry, I may not have seen that. So this is my first broken tap. Hopefully you can see up in there. Uh, busted the tap off. Hit a little too hard with the drill, trying to get a little too quick, and broke a tap. So now I gotta get in there and fix that. So there's a good way to break a tap. They are very um, brittle. So if you get up in there with a fine little chisel uh, a little pointy awl or something you can actually crack those things apart so because there's no way i'm going to get in there and pull that thing off it's bit busted up flush 
So I'll get in there with a pointy little, you know, awl or something, and I can actually break that out of there, retap the hole, and I should be good. There we go. So I got something like this. Uh, we'll go in there and we'll just kind of tap away at it, and I'll actually get the thing apart. Let me, can you guys see up in there? So I'm getting it apart uh, slowly here. So I'm just going to keep uh, kind of catching it at the high points, break that down, and keep going and going back and forth. I can uh, get the whole thing out of there. I may need a little smaller, a little more pointy. Uh, yeah, so we may have to grind this thing a little smoother. But you get the point. You just got to keep working it, and you'll get it out. So uh, another screw up. So I've got the rear driver's or the passenger side done, as you can see. Um, let me get that out of the way. Kind of runs across. Drivers have started to mock up here. So now I gotta figure out, I'm gonna put this thing probably about the same height here. Uh, so I gotta trim the tube, backwards. Uh, trim the tube, and then we'll tie it on into that. So I may go the other direction. Uh, I find it easier to get the bend first and then trim from the inside, uh, shorten it, and then do a couple of bends. So I might do that. That way this side's done, and then we'll trim from the other side. So I'll probably get this thing screwed up here first, and then we'll go from there. Um, I gotta make sure I want to get the height the same, so part way up into that. So probably right about there is what I'm thinking. That should look pretty good. Okay, so let's get this thing drilled, and we'll uh, get this last brake line bent, and the brake lines are then done. Well, thanks again for watching another episode of the Cobra Daytona Build. On this episode, I completed the rear brake line. So the brake lines are now done, the fronts are done, the rears are done. Um, as you can see, we ended up uh, coming back to, to this beam, same one the fuel uh, filter is mounted on, runs over, down, and end up right here. I gotta put some tape on this one. So that is it. So the brakes are now ready to go. Uh, as you can see, cross there, it comes down. So pretty clean, uh, should be good. So now I just uh, got away for the rest of the parts. So uh, hopefully my AAN flare fitting, hopefully my AAN flare tool shows up and then I can start uh, finishing up the fuel line. So it shouldn't take long, probably another day. And then we'll have fuel and brake lines done and I'll be done with plumbing, which is a nice thing to be done with. So thanks again for watching. If you like this episode, uh, please hit subscribe and look forward to you on the next episode of the Cobra Daytona build.